everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Orient Today. I'm here with Anna Souza. And why don't you tell me about yourself, Anna Souza? <laughs> okay, so I'm 14. I was born in Santander in, in Brazil, and I moved to the US in 2016. I firstly moved to Troy, and we lived in a, like an apartment for a while, like for a couple months. And then we decided to move to Lake Orion since that's where we bought our house. Oh, why did you decide to move to Troy specifically? Um, well, my dad got like offered an opportunity to work like in the United States at General Motors since that's where he worked in Brazil. And since like where he's meant to work, I guess, is in Detroit, like we just wanted somewhere in the general area like around it. So we were just like, okay, well, we can the yeah, apartment there we just I think picked our own place I don't know I didn't really have much say in it um so we're just like yeah that place seems good and then we just moved there and then we stayed there for a couple months and then Lake Orion. Well from what I know now you currently are living in Lake Orion so how come you moved from Troy to Lake Orion? Uh well we were just looking at a couple houses like we had this lady I don't know what they're called <laughs> but she was like showing us houses you know and one of them just happened to be in Lake Orion. So we were like, that's a nice house. We like the price of it. We're just going to move there. So. Mm. Well, how come, other than moving to General Motors, how come your entire family or just with you and mom wanted to move to United States? Uh, well, the United States has like a lot more opportunities like in comparison to like other places. like here it's very different and you just get more opportunities for your life and we were like yeah we we could work with that that would be pretty fun so we were like that's yeah you know yeah. um well knowing you lived for how many years in brazil my whole life like my whole life up till i was nine so mm. I moved here when I was nine. So you probably get a couple of friends and maybe just kind of know the culture. So tell me what you miss about it. Um, well, I definitely miss my friends. Like, we had a huge friend group. Um, we were all really close. They were all so sweet. I miss them a lot. And, like, I miss my family, obviously. And, like, the food. The food is so good <laughs> in Brazil. Like, it's immaculate. I love it. It's literally so good. Like. Um, the weather there is also really good and like here it's like snowy you know but mm -hmm. I always wanted to see snow which was an exciting thing for me but hot weather I definitely miss that like mm -hmm. you know yeah so do you usually as you can see on the laptop um, do you usually drink like coconut milk from the actual <laughs> coconut in Brazil okay, <laughs> so that's one thing to talk about so here, like, okay, there. When you go to a beach, you're gonna get coconuts. Like, mm -hmm. um, not just coconut water, f as in like a drink, but you're gonna get it from the actual coconut. Like, it's just pretty much, I don't know, part of our culture, I guess? Oh. I don't know. Like, if you go to a beach, they're gonna be selling coconuts. And like, coconut water is just like really common in Brazil. Like, it's a drink most people usually like, so. If you're just at home, you're not just going to pull a coconut out <laughs> and like be like, oh, yes, let me drink this coconut water. But if you go to like a beach or something, then yeah, you'll probably get it straight out of coconut. So is there really a difference between coconut milk or coconut water or are they kind of the same? That's a good question. I think they're different. Like coconut water is just the water inside the coconut. And coconut milk, I have no idea. Like. I have no idea what <laughs> coconut milk is. It's just like milk, but coconut, yeah. you know? But what I can assume from this picture right here, I'll be guessing Brazil also has a lot of variety of seafood. Yeah. Um, once again, with the beaches, if you go to a beach, a resort or something, anything like that, there's going to be a lot of seafood options. And like shrimp is probably the most common one. And like just fish, you know? Oh. Um, I personally don't like shrimp. Like. It's not good. I don't know why people <laughs> like it. Uh, well, I think I used to like it, and then I saw it with eyes, and then I was like, oh, I am not eating that ever in my life again because of the eyes. And then I stuck with that pact forever, and I'm like, no mm. more shrimp. I don't like the eyes. 
but yeah we have like a, a lot of seafood you know so mm. so do you like other seafood items other than shrimp oh i like fish you know fr fish is always good mm. uh probably just fish like mm. like tuna salmon other types of fish like i'm fine with most things except for shrimp oh. Well, another thing I had noticed is that when I was looking over your pictures, as you can see now on another picture on the laptop, I can see that there is a lot of beautiful mountains, beautiful skies, and you probably clearly missed that. <laughs> yeah, I definitely do. Like, the scenery there was incredible. Like, you'd go to somewhere, like, to travel, and it was, like, pretty rural. Like, it was a natural place, and there were a lot of nature, like, it was so fun. It was so pretty. Like, it's really pretty here, too, but I definitely miss it over there because it was more natural and stuff like that. Yeah. Isn't it true that some Brazilians or people who live in Brazil, basically, can... Is it okay if I call them Brazilians or not? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Do... I believe they, like, some parts live in the actual rainforest. Is that true? I mean, probably, but, like, also probably not. Like... Uh, when someone thinks of Brazil, they probably think of like, oh yeah, um, rainforest, but it's like, okay, logically, think about it. Why would you live in a rainforest? I mean, like, I'm thinking more of a, like a roller area uh, near the um, rainforest. Could be. Probably. Yeah. But like inside the actual forest itself, probably not because no. the woods are really <laughs> thick. The weather sucks. Like it would probably be like, really, the like, just the air would be like really moist and stuff like that. Like mm. it would not be a good place to live in. Have you ever been there? No, I have not. Mm. So other than like the hot, humid um, weather from the rainforest <laughs> and overall very hot, very nice clear skies, where do you think you would be if you didn't move to the United States? Ah, uh, okay. If I didn't move here, I would probably be focusing right now in like math and stuff like that. Like, currently right now, where I am right now, I am mainly focusing, like, music and stuff like that. That's my passion. I really like music-related things. But if I lived in Brazil, I always, like, like music, but, like, I didn't really have a passion for it. Like, I never learned an instrument. I kind of wanted to, but I mainly wanted to focus on, like, math and stuff like that and writing. So if I had still been there, I'd still be with my friend group. I'd still be with my family. I'd be focusing on math and getting like into a good college or something like that. So. Mm. so why did you focus on heavily on mathematics back in Brazil? Well, it's what I was, like, it's what I was good at. So mm. uh, my dad's an in engineer, so he always helped me with stuff. And like, I don't know, I was just always good at math and I liked math, I like really liked math. So it was something that I actually found fun for some reason, but I liked it, <laughs> I enjoyed it, so it's one, it, it's like what I wanted to stick with. What do you think of math today? Okay, uh, it's still kind of fun. Like it's fun if you know what you're doing, but sometimes like it's definitely harder. I don't know, I haven't spent as much time focusing on math as I did there. Like I'd study a lot, like especially for school. My school we went at, we had like books like this thick. So we had to study like every day. And I en actually enjoyed doing it, so right now, math, it's, it's a bit fun sometimes, but I, I, it's not my passion. <laughs> I don't like it that much. <laughs> so do you think if you stayed in Brazil, maybe over time you would decide to move to the United States just like your dad did? Um, I mean, I'd probably want to like come here to visit and like go on a trip because it's obviously like a really pretty place and once again you get a lot more opportunities but I don't know I'd probably want to stick with my family but eventually depending on what my passion would be I'd probably want to move maybe depends like it really depends I have no idea so what are you gonna try to pursue now since music is your passion are you going to the music industry oh. or where would you want to go well I really like like arts and stuff like that performing arts is really fun like actual art itself is just amazing it's my passion 
I definitely want to try to like make a band or something with a couple of my friends. Oh, like that would be really fun. You would? Yeah. Like, are you planning to have like a bass guitarist or like play the guitar? Or, I like, want to be the piano? bass guitarist. <laughs> that would be so much fun. <laughs> yeah. So I want to either like make a band. I want to major in something music related. Uh, I just want to like play. You know, music is fun. I want to get involved in something that I'll actually like. So. What is that? one band name you want to come up with for your group? Oh, um, that's, that's a really good question. I don't know, because um, I've actually been talking about this like a couple weeks ago, but me, Stella, Rudy, and like probably other people were thinking of making a band together. I'd probably play guitar, bass guitar, Rudy, piano and keyboard and stuff like that, and Stella drums. If you play an instrument, you could join us. You know? I would definitely would. Well, that's all the time we have for this interview. Thank you so much for joining me, Anna. Of course. It's and really fun. please stay tuned because we have a next interview coming up soon. Runners and walkers of all ages are invited to come out to the 2022 Dragon Dash 5K on Sunday, May 15th. Check-in opens at 7.30 a.m. with the race starting promptly at 9 a.m. The Dragon Dash begins and ends at the Orient Center with participants heading out on the scenic Pollyann Trail toward Civic Center Park and back again. All participants will receive a medal as they cross the finish line. For more information, call 248-391-0304 or visit orientparks.com. Welcome back to Orient Today, and I am here with... Jacob Heinz. Well, Jacob Heinz, would you like to int kind of let me know what, what you do as a career? Uh, yeah, so right now, um, I'm a delivery driver for um, an office supply company, um, mm -hmm. Office Express. We're based out of um, Troy on Big Beaver. Uh, so yeah, most of my day I just wake up Get to the warehouse, we load up the work van, which is like a 15 passenger without any of the seats in it. And then I just go about my day. And it wraps up anywhere between like 12 to two with my route. And then we just do stuff around the warehouse. Oh, really? Yeah. So what do you like to do as your hobby? Well, um, I like to write music and perform. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've been playing guitar for a couple of years at this point. I think I started in eighth grade, but I'm not entirely sure. Mm. It was around that time. All right. So, um, do you like perform at open mic night when you like perform, or do you like go by out a stage and yeah. perform in front of an audience? <laughs> no, I, I I performed at a talent show one time on stage, but yeah, most of the time it's open mics, um, either like at Desert Oasis, um, which is like in downtown Rochester, or um, I got some friends and we, we, they host an open mic at their house and they have like a bunch of our buddies come over and we just do it like right in their living room and it's really fun. Oh. Yeah. And what instrument do you play since you write music and I'll be guessing you also play an instrument? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, like, yeah, it's, um, I play the guitar. Uh, so, I mean, I like to think I'm okay at it. I can't do any like the fancy um, licks or whatever, but I think I'm decent with the chords. So. Mm. Yeah. Um, when did you start learning guitar? Back in eighth grade, yeah, um, I think it was five years ago or so. Like, I guess at the time, it gets a little fuzzy um, going back so far, but yeah, that's when I picked it up during like our co-op oh. we would do with school. So, do you plan to release any albums or songs? Yes, I, I would like to. Um, I don't know if this is like what I pursue as a career, but as a side hobby, I definitely want to release some some music on Spotify and get get my name out there just just for fun. Um, are you planning to like rent out a like a studio with a mic and then just like bring in like a record mixer to mix in all the music? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely thought about it. I know um, there's a studio like just a couple minutes from my house, uh, and like multiple times it's crossed my mind, especially recently where I was thinking I could just go in there and rent it out and record. The different songs I've got because that would be really cool. 
that would be a really cool experience. Mm -hmm. So what um, song ideas do you have? I mean, like when I'm sitting in the car, I have a lot of random ideas that pop into mind, like when I'm out making my deliveries. So I like pop the voice recorder and most of the time it starts with a melody. It's not really an idea um, that like, I'm trying to get across. It's just like a melody with some lyrics. I'm like, ooh, that sounded nice. And so I record it because I don't want to forget it. Um, yeah. What usually like inspires you to write that lyrics? Yeah. Um, I mean, it depends. Sometimes, like I said, it's just random and it's just like, ooh, that'd be cool. Other times, um, it's just a longing for something different. Like, so I would say it's like an escape just mm -hmm. to get out of like the monotony of just driving in a car all day. I'm like, what if we had something different, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you kind of wish maybe in the future you could hear your own song of a radio while you drive? <laughs> that, yeah, that would be really cool. Um, I would hope that that could happen so at some point. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't plan to pursue this as a career, but if that could get, if it could get to that point as a hobby, that, yeah, go full circle, that'd be really cool. Yeah. So what do you want to pursue as a career then? Right now it's looking like I'm going to go uh, accounting. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, I've recently started budgeting and working out accounting for like different things I had to pay for, different bills. and. I don't know, there was something, I felt fulfilled when I was just trying to run those calculations and so I'm pretty sure accounting falls into that same, that same vein, so it's definitely an interest right now and yeah. So were you ever like very into in mathematics? Did you like take Algebra 1 in high school or like calculus? Not calculus, <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I, I took Algebra but I, complex math like that wasn't really my strong suit. Um, I don't know, I, I didn't really apply myself as much as I would have liked to, but I'm sure if I did, it would have been better, but yeah, I mean, I, it never really caught my interest at the time, and now that stuff's clung around and I've taken a gap year, um, I definitely want to try my hand at it again, um, and actually put effort into it and see what that can give me. Mm. So have you ever thought about taking, like, art in high school or were you ever like an artistic person or did you take band? Yeah, I, I didn't do band but I did have some art classes here and there. Um, I, I used to draw a lot so yeah. Um, yeah. So as I ca you can see, are these like your drawings? Or? No, this, this is actually a, a good friend of mine, uh, his name is Josh Masterson and um, he whipped this up for me because I was like, yo, I need an album cover for this and he was like, dude, I got you. So he went that up, I don't know, in like a half hour. It was really quick and it, it, it encapsulates like the whole vibe I give off, so yeah. Is that you right there? That's me, yep. <laughs> in, in the graphite. <laughs> yeah. So why is it named Stories? Is it like after one of your songs? Yeah, yeah, so Stories is the name of um, my most recent song. Um, so it's, it's just about like life experience like there are seven billion people alive right now and there are countless people who came before who passed away and that's sort of like what this song is it's like about the those people who are no longer with us uh specifically the people that don't get credit for anything um or like who are forgotten um like if you're walking around in a cemetery and you look and like you see all these names and like you know there were people they lived their lives, but like, unless you knew someone who knew them, you, you're not going to know like what their story was. And so this is just, it's explaining or it's going over even that, even though they may be forgotten, like they still had a story to be told. So in a way you kind of want to honor that. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's take a quick listen to a two minute preview of Jacob's amazing song. Away in the past, 
Hiding vines, hiding what lies beneath. She was so young and in love. He was headstrong. What can go wrong? Now they're long gone, but the wind still sings a hill song. Hill song. There was a soldier down the road. You get alone. In the corner of the bar, drink away his heavy heart. You lost a part of himself on the battlefield. And when he tries to sleep, his guilt keeps him awake all night. All night How many lifetimes were lived So much virtue and sin No credit to the voiceless To the ones who bear the road for the rest I wish that I could hear this story ONTV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and non-linear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Hello and welcome back to the program. I'm now with... Aneta. And today we will be cooking for you blueberry brie tartlets. Sounds good to me. Let's get started. For this recipe, you're going to need lemon juice, Blueberries. Those are for the decoration. And as well for the jam. Yep. You're also going to need almonds, rosemary, also for the jam, lemon zest, honey, and of course, the bride cheese. Looks good to me. And about 16 pastry shells. Pastry shells, yeah. yeah. Small uh, mini pastry shells. So that's our first step. We have to bake them according to the recipe on the back. So, which is around between uh, three to five minutes. And uh, we need to preheat the oven to 300, 350 Fahrenheit, I believe. Yes, indeed. Let's check it out. 350 Fahrenheit. So we do have them ready for you. So it took us around four minutes. So those are how they look like. All right, so let's get started. All right, so for the jam itself, you're going to need lemon juice, rosemary, blueberries, lemon zest, and honey. You're gonna put all of these goodies into a saucepan. Yeah, let me hold the spoon for you. So you're just gonna pour all of these in, like so. So that's a rosemary. Yeah. Blueberries. We do have some very nice honey. I think we need a spoon for this. We can just pour it all in. It's yeah. fine. Just to add a little bit of that sweetness in. Ooh. Yeah. See? The spoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Always use a spoon, I guess. Years of experience. Man, this is like one of the first um, rosemary based recipes since you were like the first one when I was cooking and being like yeah. don't cook it it's with rosemary yeah. <laughs> so it's our first recipe actually so Dominica did a really good uh, job uh, when she was nine so that's her favorite appetizer honestly it's 
already really perfect yep. for using it as a dish for like a small meeting or other things and it's just very light and it's usually very good with like tea and just something nice and sweet for the evening. All right, Dominica, that's your part. Yeah, so right now we are going to heat it up to medium high heat. We are going to cook the jam, basically kind of like stir it a little bit. And then once it just starts kind of heating up, we're going to put the lid on just to let it steam and yeah. it, until it gets a very nice, thick, consistency. All right, and then in the meantime, we can put the um, shells here and we will okay. wait for the jam to cook. So see you in around 10 minutes. And we're back. Yes, and the jam is ready. So here's the consistency, how the jam look like. So it's kind of thick, as you can see. We will be using two uh, icing bags one for um, our cheese and the second will be for our jam and we will start to stop the shelves right now all right dominica so i will put the cheese inside sounds good yeah and if you can stop the shelves that would be great we do have some as dominica mentioned some um, blueberries and almonds for decorations so our appetizer would definitely look really nice so a little bit messy, so be patient with that. We need a little bit of time. You can also spoon the cheese in, but we found it easier and it looks much better once you use an icing bag. Yeah, icing bag is much easier. Important thing is, you know, like take the cheese out before putting this into the mixing bowl around 30 minutes before and cut it into small pieces, like inch by inch. And mix, the, and mix the cheese for around 15 minutes. So that's the cheese we have ready for today. All right, Dominica, that's about it. We're gonna have a little bit leftovers. The recipe is uh, asking us for 16 pieces. We do have 15 pieces because this is how many pieces is coming in the package. So we're gonna have a little bit leftovers. And you can try to stop the shoes. Here All right. you are. Thank you. I'm gonna hold it for you. First done. It sticks. <laughs> yeah, it looks great. Yeah, I will hold it for you as well here. All right. Yeah. So flower shape it's a very it looks really nice especially yeah. with the jam added yeah so while you are doing that I will start on putting the jam into the another um, icing bag mm -hmm. yeah thank you absolutely for great yeah Thank you for making this with me. It's been a real pleasure to cook with an actual cook. <laughs> yeah. It's pleasure and it's mine. So, family time. Highly recommended to everyone. Do we have enough? I do think we have enough and even some left over. Oh. Yeah, this is what we've been expecting. Yeah, just hold it like that and just... And I should get out of that air. And there is some air inside. All right. So All right. we have to um, let the jam cool down. So right now it's ready for decoration. That will be our second layer. So the same approach. I will put the cheese aside. We will not gonna use it anymore. I will put the jam here. We don't need that. And put the jam into the icing bag. I will be using Dominica. What type? A. I believe this is a round tip. Yeah, exactly. Which is very handy. I'm gonna use a bigger spoon this time. 
it's gonna make the process a little bit faster for us. Just want to remind every everyone that the jam includes raspberry, which smells absolutely amazing. And tastes amazing as well. Right? Make sure that you test the tool before putting into the appetizer because it may have a small chunks as of rosemary. So I will gonna hold it and put a little bit on the top. And Dominica, while I'm doing this, you can transfer the ready ones into the plate and decorate them with the blueberries and some almonds we have. And that's a jam. <laughs> yeah, that will be extra. Put some almonds with cranberries we have ready and blueberries. Oops, it's not easy, it can be a little bit messy. So make sure that you are wearing apron to protect your clothing. Clothing, exactly. All right, everything is almost ready. And now I'm going to add the blueberries for decoration and give it a little bit more of a nice taste. And would you like to put in the cranberries and almonds? Yeah. All so, right. Let's transfer this to our beautiful plate. All right. We have some friends coming over. So. So would you like to decorate? Yeah. I want to go decorate after. it with you. All right. So would you like to decorate on the plate? Of the course. First done. Congratulations. Amazing. Looks amazing. Maybe a small cranberry will be nice as well. All right. I will actually add a little bit two blueberries to it. That looks like a face. <laughs> oh, that's a smiley face. Looks great. It's a little bit of work, as you can, as you, everyone can see here, but it's definitely working. Because it tastes so good and smells so good. Yeah. We love honey in this recipe. Depends of type of the honey you like, you can, you know, um, you can replace it with sugar, but uh, honey is definitely better for this recipe. All right, how is it looking? It's looking pretty as well. I think I am missing a blueberry here. Oh, are you? I'm so yeah. sorry. Yeah, I am missing. I didn't oh. transfer it. Oh, all right. See? I'm sorry. <laughs> Unattended transfer. We are getting closer. How do they look? Well, as we add just like a couple more, it seems that we are unfortunately running out of time again. <laughs> yeah. But these look delicious and I hope you will enjoy them too. And we will see you on another episode. Thank you for watching. Enjoy! <laughs>